Is spending four years and tens of thousands of dollars for a tech degree that might not even get you a job worth it in 2024? Let's find out. First, let's set the scene. The technological skill gap is a real issue that refers to the growing divide between the tech skills that employers need and the skills that the workforce actually has. McKinsey reports that 87% of companies are aware of a tech skills gap and 59% of hiring managers expect AI to change the required skills, prioritizing abilities over degrees. There's no need even to have a college degree oh, well, okay. at all, uh, or even yeah. high school. Bill Gates, Larry Ellison, Steve Jobs, these guys didn't graduate from college. Oh, yeah. But if yeah. you had a chance yeah. to hire them, of course, that would be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Additionally, student loans in the US exceed $1.75 trillion. On average, borrowers owe nearly $30,000, an enormous burden for someone fresh out of high school. So with all that information in mind, is an official tech degree worth it? Or are you better off without it? Hey man, I got my masters. Would you my master now? <laughs> Let's start with the benefits. Number one, social skills and networking. At the university, you're surrounded by peers, professors, and even industry professionals. These networks can sometimes open doors for internships, job offers, and collaborations that might not happen otherwise. Number two, degree as a screening tool. Whilst many tech companies are moving away from degree requirements, some employers still see a degree as a sign of dedication and competence. A degree can sometimes get you through the door for an interview where you might be overlooked otherwise. Now let's look at the downsides. Number one, time and cost. We've covered the main concerns already, but it still bears repeating. Four years of study, tens of thousands of dollars in tuition, and potential student loan debt can be huge barriers for many people. You're not that guy, pal, trust me. You're not that guy, okay? Number two, outdated curriculums. The tech world moves fast and universities often struggle to keep their curriculums updated. By the time you graduate, your skills could already be obsolete and you might need to learn new tools or languages on your own. Lack of focus on practical skills. While formal education can provide theoretical knowledge, many programs don't focus enough on the practical, hands-on skills that tech employers are looking for today. That's why many students turn to side projects or freelance work to fill in the gaps. It all seems to somewhat uncertain. So how can you know for sure? Let me introduce you to the return on investment concept. ROI is a metric usually used in business and marketing. Essentially, it means comparing what you put in, like time, money, and effort, to what you get, such as salary and career opportunities. Let me show you this neat tool that I found. It's called College NPV. So, for example, let's look at the California Institute of Technology. According to estimates, graduates have an impressive career-long ROI of almost $4 million. On average, they earn around $21,000 per month, while their student loan payments are only about $1,000 per month, a pretty manageable figure. That might sound impressive, but let's look at some other universities. If you apply to a smaller uni like NUC or Northern Kentucky, you can see that the ROI will be less than stellar. It is important to remember that different universities offer different perks and qualities that can heavily influence your future career success. So what are the alternatives to formal education? Number one, boot camps are short practical programs that aim to prepare you for a specific role in tech, usually in a matter of months, not years. However, the high price and intense curriculum combined with the lackluster foundational knowledge often deter people with full-time jobs or other commitments from choosing boot camps. Number two, self-learning. From videos, books, and online tutorials is often seen as the most flexible and cost-effective method. As you can choose the resources that best fit your needs, the biggest drawback here is the lack of interaction and feedback. It also requires high self-motivation, as losing focus without deadlines or accountability can be easy. Number three, online learning platforms like Hyperskill, <laughs> yep, shameless plug, offer self-paced and structured learning environments. These platforms often simulate real work conditions, allowing you to build tech skills while receiving feedback and guidance. They're also usually more affordable than traditional education or boot camps. However, you must still be motivated and self-disciplined to progress. So which path is best? 
As usual, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. While higher education can be valuable, it demands a lot of resources, time and money that many don't have. Plus, not everyone knows that they want to be a developer right out of high school. Online learning is a flexible and affordable alternative for those who discover their passion later in life or can't afford expensive tuition. With platforms like Hyperskill, you can pick up the specific skills needed to land a job or switch careers without the burden of traditional degrees. It's a realistic path for anyone looking to break into tech, no matter their life stage or financial situation. That's all we've got for you folks. So what do you think about formal tech education? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.